They say you should be careful that you don't miss the boat. But it's not always a bad thing. It wasn't with my grandmother's family. In their goal of emigrating from Sweden to America in 1912, a delay caused them to miss the maiden voyage of the greatest ship of its time, the RMS Titanic. After hitting an iceberg and sinking, more than 1,500 of the estimated 2,234 passengers and crew died. The Titanic has become one of the most famous ships in history. Her memory is kept alive by numerous movies, books, exhibits, and memorials. On board were a number of famous passengers, such as the entrepreneur John Jacob Astor IV, or the unsinkable Molly Brown, Dorothy Gibson was a famous movie actress. She survived and one month later played herself in a silent film called Saved from the Titanic. Violet Constance Jessup was an ocean liner stewardess and nurse who survived the sinking of the Titanic. She also survived the sinking of two other sister vessels, the Britannic and the Olympic. And there were also many other people who may not have possessed fame, but did have amazing stories. One such man was Pastor John Harper. He and his six-year-old daughter were taking the Titanic to move to the United States. He was about to become the new pastor of one of the greatest churches in America, Moody Church in Chicago, named for its famous founder, Dwight L. Moody. Harper pastored two churches in Glasgow and London, and was known as an engaging preacher and an effective evangelist. A peer said he was a great open-air preacher and could always command large and appreciative audiences. He could deal with all kinds of interrupters. His great and intelligent grasp of Bible truths enabling him to successfully combat all assailants. When the Titanic hit the iceberg, Harper quickly led his daughter to a lifeboat. Since he was a widower, he may have been allowed to join her, but instead decided to stay on board for one final mission, to tell as many as possible that they could be ready for death if only they would trust in Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. He shared this message with groups and individuals as the boat continued to submerge. As they sank further, Harper was heard shouting, Women! Children! and the unsaved into the lifeboats. When the offer of salvation was rejected by a man, John Harper gave him his own life vest, saying, You need this more than I do. Up until the last moment on the ship, Harper pleaded with people to give their lives to Jesus. As the ship disappeared beneath the surface, hundreds were left floundering above with little chance for rescue. Harper struggled through hypothermia to swim to as many people as he could, telling them to turn to Jesus. One survivor recounted his own conversation with Harper in the middle of the frigid Atlantic. Harper swam up to him, twice challenging him with a biblical invitation to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. He rejected the offer once, yet given the second chance, and with miles of water beneath his feet, the man gave his life to Christ. Then as Harper sank to his own watery grave, the new believer was rescued by a returning lifeboat. Years later, at an Ontario meeting of survivors, he stated, I am the last convert of John Harper. After the tragedy, the White Star Line in Liverpool, England, placed a bulletin board outside its office with two lists of passengers, those known to be saved and those known to be lost. John Harper's name was on the second list, but he wasn't really lost. On the day he trusted in Christ, he had been saved and given eternal life, and his last moments on earth were spent on a titanic effort to bring others to heaven with him.